What's poppin' y'all? It's your girl McKay. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am so, so happy to see your beautiful face. Thank you so much for coming back. And if this is your first time here, do not forget to subscribe. Make sure everyone likes and comments down below. And, and, don't forget to hit that bell button so that way you get notified every single time I upload a video. As you can see by the title of this video, I'm going to tell you how do I afford to go to NYU. And if you're thinking to yourself, How much is NYU? How expensive can it be? NYU, depending on the school that you go to in NYU, because NYU has schools, it ranges from 70 to like 80 plus thousand dollars a year. <laughs> That's just like, I just have to let that sit for a second. So I hope you let that sit too, because it's a lot of money. So how do I afford to go to such an extensive school? We gonna get right into it. The first thing that really helps me personally go to NYU and return every single semester is a merit-based scholarship that I have with the school. I know people say NYU doesn't give money, schools don't give money, all of that jazz, but personally, NYU gave me a great scholarship, merit-based scholarship, when I first applied, and that kind of really helped me be like, okay, I think I think I can do this. I think I can go to this school. So that merit-based scholarship, what that means is that scholarship is solely based off of my grades. And so my grades in high school helped me get that scholarship. And so if you are in high school and you are watching this video, keep your grades up, keep that GPA up, because those merit-based scholarships at whatever school you go to will really help you out. And it's a scholarship, meaning that you will never have to pay it back. It is literally just money for you. Granted, you will have to keep a certain GPA when you enroll in the school, but to be honest, it's really not that high. It's very much doable. If you can keep a really great GPA in high school, I'm sure you could keep the GPA that the college requires of you when you actually start at the school. Under the merit-based scholarship, this isn't like a tip number two, this is more like a sub-tip. Apply to other programs in the school. When you're actually in the school, apply to programs. I applied to study abroad. That came with study abroad scholarships. That came with extra money because I was taking advantage of the opportunity of going into another program at NYU. I was going into the study abroad program. I was going on to another campus. And so they opened up a pool of money again for applicants. And guess who applied? Me. <laughs> um, and so that scholarship, I was like, okay. They are going to give me money to go, so I am definitely going to go. Um, expenses and like affording things that are extra in the school, I think they're cognizant of like, okay, this school is expensive in itself. People aren't going to be able to pay to go study abroad, so let's make a scholarship fund for those people. Take advantage of those scholarships. Go into that program. Do the activity, whatever it is. And the next tip that I want to talk about that I kind of talked about in the video of how I got into NYU, and if you haven't watched that yet, go ahead and watch that. But the next thing that I want to talk about is scholarships, period. And I mean outside scholarships. So outside scholarships is scholarships that organizations people send you they send a physical check to the school that you're attending and it goes toward your tuition your room and board um, extra fees whatever the case may be and so I have both local and national scholarships and what that means is that I applied to to scholarships that were specifically for people in my area in which I live so if you live in Atlanta Georgia apply to scholarships that are specifically for high schoolers in Atlanta Georgia because that means that the pool is smaller than like a national scholarship where like you're competing against like so many students in the entirety of the United States and so also apply to national scholarships though that doesn't mean don't apply apply to the national scholarships because those essays are more intense they take more time which means that less people are going to want to apply to it because people don't want to put that much time into a scholarship essay because they'd rather put the time into their application for college but if you kind of handle your time right and you prioritize and you schedule everything whenever you need to schedule it you will have time to do these long intense essays to ensure that you get that twenty thousand thirty thousand forty thousand whatever thousand dollar scholarship that you need to get and so personally I have about five scholarships that are outside of NYU that I receive every single year that gets sent to NYU and in that hole that takes care of about 75 80 percent of all of the expenses for NYU and so you might ask well then McKay where's the other 20 percent coming from 
I will tell you. The next tip that I'm going to say that will make it make sense how I pay for the extra 20%, I became an RA. RA positions have a limited number. I think they accept like 100 something a year. Don't quote me on that because I honestly don't know the number, but I know there's like a total of like three to 400 RAs on the entirety of the campus. And there's 25,000 people in undergrad. So competition is high. Make sure your application is bomb. Get into some leadership stuff at NYU and apply to be an RA. That will get you, you know, your room and board paid for. And personally for me, getting that, I don't pay to go to NYU because I am an RA now. So that in itself was like the breaking point. I knew from senior year of high school, I needed to become an RA junior year. So that way my junior and senior year, I'm not paying a dime to go to that school. And that's what ended up happening. And thank God, because I honestly had some thoughts like, okay, if I don't get this RA position, I'm not gonna keep taking out these loans that I don't wanna take out. I'm gonna transfer if it comes down to it. I really had those thoughts in my head because I was like, well, if I don't get the RA position, because who has to pay back those loans at the end of this four years? Me. So the next tip is to take on a part-time job, take on an on-campus job. The reason why I kind of emphasize the on-campus job specifically is because they don't take taxes out of your paycheck. If the hourly rate for on-campus jobs is $15, you will get that $15 every single hour without taxes being taken out. And I personally think that's beautiful because that means that I don't have to travel far because I'm working on campus as opposed to if I was traveling I don't know, 30 minutes, I gotta pay for the subway, I gotta pay for the Uber, whatever it might be, I gotta pay for lunch, but if you're on campus and you have a job, lunch is in the dining hall, transportation is your feet, and you get the entire hourly wage with no taxes taken out at the end of your two week pay period. And personally, the reason why I still had or have an on-campus job, um, even though I don't have to literally pay for anything, is for small things like making sure I got some food money. If I wanna, you know, splurge one day and go grab dinner at Sweet Green, I can go do that because I have a job that I work a few hours a week that gives me basically pocket change. And so I definitely would say take advantage of that. And so y'all, the last, last tip that I kinda think is really useful is that NYU has a thing called financial aid appeal. It's a semesterly financial aid appeal. I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's semesterly. And so you basically can tell the school, this happened, that made my parents' income go down $10,000. That made my mom lose her job. That made, whatever the case may be, whatever, whatever situation changed financially for you, tell them that and they will reevaluate your financial aid package, which means that if you had a, um, a drop in your parents' income for the year, if your parent lost a job, whatever the case may be, they have different scenarios that you can kind of like check the box on the, on the little application. And it's not an intense application. Let me say that right now. It's not an intense application. So if you check a box, you just explain how, you know, how you got to that situation. My mom lost her job, so now we don't have any income period like that's it it's not really that intense and so they will reevaluate your financial aid and based on the information that you gave you give them all that information boom they reevaluate your financial aid next few weeks you see a three thousand dollar four thousand dollar five thousand dollar financial aid appeal scholarship in your financial aid package so you know get that cushion fund if you have to appeal, you have to appeal. The worst they can say is no. But if you don't put it in, it's equivalent to no, meaning that you don't get the money. So they could say yes and give you that extra change that you need, that extra scholarship that you need based on your situation. So y'all, I honestly wanted this video to kind of be short and sweet. Just some little gems that I just wanted to drop. This is kind of like a college series, I guess, because the first video that I made um, was about how I got into NYU and then this video is about how I afford NYU So I hope y'all took some gems from both videos if you have not watched the video about how I got into NYU Go watch that please, but I appreciate you guys so 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 much for sticking around and watching this video Thank you guys so much for all of your support. I love you so 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 much I don't know how many times I'm gonna say so but I'm gonna just say it again so so much um, Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I will see you next time. Bye